All right, Jalen Brown is back in Boston after spending time this past week in Spain for an NBPA event. Jalen organized the uh, painting of a community basketball court in Dorchester. He did not talk about his contract negotiations, which will reportedly resume next week, but he did stress his connection with his adopted city. I know as an athlete, sometimes you're removed from you know, these spaces. They put you, you know, over in these areas where they forget about the communities that you come from. And since I've been an athlete, since I've been here, I've been refusing to do that, right? And this is one small example of what's going on here in these spaces in Boston. But as long as I'm here, like these things like, will continue. All right, we're going to bring in Chris Forsberg now, as well as Saron Battle of 98.5, the Sports Hub. And uh, let's, Chris, I'll start with you because you were at the event today. And, and when you hear Jalen kind of use the phrase for as long as I'm here, do you read anything into that? I don't know. I know we hyperanalyze everything when we're waiting for this supermax to come through and we'll, we'll judge everything from body language to like little things. He says, the only thing I'll take away is if you do want to overanalyze it, the thing comes back to like, he wants to protect his future, right. In terms of uh, if they are quibbling over fifth year player option over trade kickers, he's just like, he wants to be here. He just wants to protect himself from maybe the team deciding that they want to move on earlier than that. And so uh, maybe that's Jalen's just subtle way, but I do think more than anything today was about giving back to the community and putting a smile on a lot of kids' faces out there. And uh, it was a good reminder uh, of what Jalen Brown means to Boston, seeing him out there and, and, and being part of the community. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with Chris on this one. I mean, I think it's going to get done. Um, I think he wants to be here and, you know, he's, he's been around a few events in the city, uh, basketball tournaments, things like that is going on in the city, but stuff like this is why Jalen Brown gets a lot of love in inner city, Boston. They, they see him, you know, they, they relate with him. And I think stuff like this is, it's a good move, a good gesture on his part. And I think the fans will be behind him and want him to be here. And I hope he, you know, feels the love of the people that are out there. You know, we, we hear a lot of stories about him you know, not feeling liked or loved in the city or respected, whatever it may be. But I believe there's a huge section of the city that do appreciate Jalen Brown and, and, and loves when he comes out and gives back to the community like that. And I, and I understand what that means to those kids that I grew up in that neighborhood. So I completely understand how important that is and how big that is for that community. So it's a good for, good for him. Yeah, it, it's. And Giles, real quick on this, like, think about it. So I think he was in Paris for like fashion week. Then he went to Vegas for the uh, summer league stuff and the, and the MBPA stuff, giving stuff to rookies there. Then he went to Spain. Then he was in New York last night, but he still made it a priority to get back to Boston. And I know we tend to focus on like eight turnovers in a game seven. And, and understandably, that's like what we do on this program. But he showed up, he looked a little sleepy, but he was there and he made it. And so like, I think that, that, that speaks something to what he feels about this community. You hear a lot of rumors about not wanting to be here or whatever, but when you spend an off season with other players around different situations, you realize like, you know what, maybe my situation isn't that bad. Maybe the Celtics organization is, is not a bad organization to play for. You know, you hear rumors of trades and stuff like that. He hears it too. And it's like, you know, maybe I don't want to go play in Portland or, or Houston. You know, maybe I do. I, I appreciate, I appreciate where I'm at. I appreciate my team. We're a good team. I appreciate my situation, what I've done, this community. And I think he understands, you know, playing for the Celtics is a big deal. And I think he's enjoying that. And I, I, I believe he's really sincere in that. And I think he wants to be here and be a part of this organization for as long as possible. Yeah. And one of the things we always obsess about is like, would he want his own situation? Would he want to be the focal point of another team? That sounds great until you're, you know, in Portland with a rebuilding situation and trying to figure out how to muddle through that. I think those comments last night just reaffirmed what he has said consistently being here, that it's all about winning, that him and Jason have a great relationship. And he, he's I, maybe as he gets older, too, I wonder if he starts to appreciate that more. And, and talking about the group that they're going to have going into next year. Sounds like one player that uh, who we've been closely monitoring this offseason. That's Malcolm Brogdon, and after nearly being traded before the draft this season, point guard, uh, he could be staying put because here's what an anonymous league source told Heavy Sports' Steve Bolpet. We asked about him, and we were told he's a valued member of their team, and that's where it ended. I don't know if that changed down the line, but we didn't get anywhere, and I'm pretty sure we aren't the only team that got that response. So it sounds like, by all indications, in this report from Steve Bolpet, that 
you know, the leagues out there, maybe they're still knocking on the door to try to find out, hey, there was Malcolm Brogdon. He was involved in the original trade package uh, that uh, got brought in Chris Porzingis. Obviously, Marcus Smart ends up in that one. And then there were still some, you know, murmurs around that maybe Malcolm Brogdon could still be on the trade block because obviously they, they seem willing to part with him there. Uh, so why do you think it would be that they would not be willing to part with him at this point? Depth. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, you don't have the three guard situation there no more. And, and and on top of that, he was a good player. He was a good player for them last year. Six man in a year. Majority of the season, the guy was a 50, 40, 90 shooter. And he's a good player. He had the injury in the playoffs. And of course, we that's the that's the most recent thing we remember. So we're going to judge him on that. But for the majority of the season, Brockton was a good player for them. He was a good player. Uh, for, for a decent amount of time this season. And he is going to be a valuable player for them. You don't have a Marcus Smart anymore. So it's it's Brogdon, it's Derek White, and that's who you're going to have to roll with. So they, they need him to be an important piece on this team and be healthy, you know, come down the stretch. So I will be a little skeptical. I think if, if they had had the chance to do both those deals, I wonder if they might have. If they might have moved Brogdon and still moved Smart, because in that package they probably would have brought back Tyus Jones. At that point, you felt more comfortable about your point guard depth chart than maybe what you're finding now, which is, you know, teams are a little bit leery about Brogdon just because of the injury injury history and the injury situation right now. I wonder if there's just not a deal out there that interests them. And so they're like, you know what? It's almost better to bank on him recovering, getting back to being the, the, the player that he was last year, maybe hoping he evolves a little bit more in terms of sharing the basketball and not just being sort of the go-to scorer off the bench. And if those things happen, and Malcolm Brogdon still has a huge value to this team. It's just he's going to have to be a little bit different than he was last year and put maybe a little bit more emphasis on the playmaking. I mean, he was sixth man of the year last year, and I understand everyone wants to take a look at the injury and what that means for the start of the season, but it really doesn't matter what it means for the start of the season, right? It matters what in June. It matters in May, in June, and having Malcolm Brogdon healthy for that. So I think sometimes it just feels a little short-sighted as far as that's concerned. I understand. You know, you want the team at 100%. You want to make sure that – they're the best team in the Eastern Conference, get that number one seed. But I, I think it just matters uh, what he looks like come playoff time. Check out the latest Celtics Talk podcast. Chris Forsberg catching up with the trainer for Celtics big man Robert Williams and asks what they've been working on this offseason. You can scan the QR code on the screen or find it on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube.